both anode and cathode spots can lead to crater formation. The most obvious difference is obviously on which electrode the crater forms. Initially, an anode or cathode spot forms, which might then create craters. These spots can be stationary or can move. We have previously examined cathode spots in two separate videos, so what exactly are the differences compared to anode spots and craters? Let's dive in and find out more. An anode spot is a highly ionized plasma formed at the contact area of a plasma channel to a positively biased electrode. Despite many studies examining the formation and properties of anode spots, the mechanisms of initiation for these plasma objects is still subject to debate. By analysing the behaviour of the anode surface and the nearby plasma, the most probable explanation for the formation of anode spots can be given as a combination theory, which considers magnetic constriction in the plasma together with the material fluxes from the anode, as well as thermal, electrical and geometric effects of the anode. When the current density of an anode is large, the anode glow splits into a series of bright rings or spots, arranged in regular patterns, often stationary, but sometimes moving rapidly. The actual arrangement of the spots depends upon the current density and the shape of the anode. They are very sensitive to the presence of impurities in the gas and on the electrode surface. The formation of anode spots has shown that in the gas discharge between cold electrodes, the cathode absorbs gas through positive bombardment and the anode emits gas at rates which are a function of current density, gas pressure, the type of gas and the electrode temperature. There are at least three different modes. Diffuse mode, this is a low current mode where the anode is inert. Footprint mode, here there is an intermediate current and the anode starts to be an active part of the discharge. The spots are luminous and cause the anode to melt. Real anode spot mode. There is a high current and it is associated with a very high temperature and the vaporization of the anode material. Anode and cathode cratering. The mechanism for the formation of craters in the anode and the cathode are similar, but there are some distinctions. In the cathode, there are a number of mechanisms that can cause electrons to be emitted. This could occur through a cold cathode where electrons are ripped from the surface due to the electric field or a hot cathode where the cathode is heated so that it starts to emit electrons. In the latter case, this could be caused by impacted ions. The essential mechanism is that the electrons leaving and the ions impacting the surface cause the material to start to vaporise. This will already be partly ionised, but the electric field will quickly ionise all of it. The ions will not only feel the force from the strong electric field, but will also be repelled by each other. This creates a cloud of vaporised material above the cathode and leaves behind craters. As the material falls back down to the cathode, secondary craters can be formed as new plasma channels are created. For the anode, it is the incoming electrons that collide with the surface, which causes a heating effect and also causes ionisation. Again here, it leaves a crater behind. But in the case of the anode, the vaporised material, which is ionised, does not fall back but will journey towards the cathode, eventually being implanted on its surface. So are there any visible differences between anode and cathode craters? There are several experiments which have attempted to look at exactly this problem. In these experiments, they simply reverse the polarity to examine the differences between the anode and cathode. What these showed was that the polarity influences the arc plasma movement and the crater morphology. The images show strikingly different crater morphology, with the anode one being much more precise compared to the cathode. If we examine the anode crater, we can see that at a higher current the crater became more irregular and deeper. This can be explained by the higher energy input and arc plasma movement with a higher average moving speed and a larger moving range. The cathode crater was deeper with lapped pits. Around the edge of both cathode craters, a band of tiny craters can be observed. One striking difference between the two is the speed of the moving arc. The arc plasma moving speed with a cathode workpiece was always higher than that with an anode workpiece under the same discharge conditions. The movement speed of the arc could weaken the stability of the arc plasma. The experiment used a tool electrode which was brought up to the sample surface and a discharge was initiated. 
Here it can be seen that when the workpiece polarity was the same, the diameter of the crater was larger in the case of the flat end. But when the workpiece was an anode, the crater shape generated with the taper end electrode was more regular than that generated with the flat end. In comparison, when it was the cathode, the crater shape generated with the taper end was a single big pit, while in the case of the flat end electrode, the crater shape was an overlap of small pits. In the case of the taper end tool electrode, when the arc plasma moved away from the tip to the side, its diameter increased which means that the energy density decreased. Therefore, during discharge, only in the center area of the molten pool could the arc plasma provide the strongest energy density to the workpiece, so the crater morphology obtained was more regular and symmetrical. In contrast, when the flat end electrode was used, the arc plasma would not change obviously in diameter and could move within a larger area which was considered to be one of the reasons that caused the irregular morphology. One other factor that can affect the morphology of the craters is the gap distance between the electrodes. As the discharge gap was increased, the crater went from an irregular profile to a much more regular profile on the anode end. The size of the crater decreased, and the movement and the speed of the arc plasma also decreased, leading to the more regular shape. When the discharge current was the same, a small arc plasma diameter meant higher energy density. The difference in energy density is considered to be one of the reasons that caused the difference in arc plasma movement and crater morphology under the different gap distances. On the surface of the anode workpiece, as the arc plasma on the anode is restricted by the molten pool, higher energy density caused by smaller gap distance might intensify the fluctuations of the molten pool during discharge and thus rapid arc plasma moving speed, generating a crater with a more irregular shape and a larger diameter. By comparison, on the cathode workpiece surface, the arc plasma could move out of the molten pool. A higher energy density caused by the smaller gap distance also means higher electrode emission density which might require the arc plasma to move with a larger amplitude and faster speed. Due to this quicker movement, a smaller volume of material was removed, and thus a crater with larger diameter and smaller depth is created. In a different experiment, they examined microcraters on the anode and cathode created by different discharge energies. Here, it is important to point out that they did not use the same metal on the anode and cathode, so we need to be careful in comparing the size of the two based on these images. In these experiments, they used a vacuum arc discharge or introduced a dielectric material between the cathode. So what effect does the dielectric have on the shape and the size of the crater? In this image, we can see the differences between single discharges in air and oil and the change in shape and length over the duration of the discharge. One important point to consider here is that in the formation of these craters in a dielectric gas or liquid, part of the formation process is governed by the formation and collapse of a bubble in the dielectric just above the electrode. Peaked craters. So far, these craters are all hollows, so how are the peaked craters created? One possible explanation is through helical currents in the discharge. In this experiment, they used a gliding arc plasmatron to create anode spots. The most important difference here is the non-melted plate, and therefore low current, in the middle of the eroded areas, where based on the conventional models, a maximum current density is expected. The most likely explanation for this is a toroidal heating of the surface by a helical current. The plasma plume created by the gliding arc plasmatron has been shown to generate a helical current around the plume. Sliding arc spots. Several factors can affect the movement of the arc spots. We have previously examined these in the cathode spots. For prolonged discharges, the movement of the arc discharge or the movement of the anode will cause dramatic changes to the shape of the crater created. Starting with no movement, a more spherical crater, to a more teardrop crater with increased movement. Energy distribution. In electrical discharges, electrons are seen as simply falling from the plasma into the anode because of its higher electrical potential. 
whereas the cathode has developed very efficient emission mechanisms to extract electrons into the plasma. The voltage jump is mostly localised near the electrodes, in the anode and cathode layer. So is there a difference between the energy distribution at the anode compared to the cathode? In this graph we can see a comparison of the different experiments. It shows that for short discharge durations most of the energy is dissipated into the plasma and dielectric, whereas for long discharge durations, when the plasma becomes self-sustaining, most of the energy is dissipated into the anode and cathode. In general, for discharge durations longer than 20 microseconds, anode craters are smaller compared to the craters on the cathode. Removal mechanisms. In order to understand the crater formation, Smeller Nordlung and separately Timco et al. used particle in-cell simulations. They were able to show that huge fluxes of energetic ions can form crater-like damages on the surface and lead to sputtering of large atom clusters. The craters have complex shapes that can be explained by strong, non-equilibrium heating of material due to the energetic ions accelerated in the plasma sheath potential. From these simulations it can be inferred that for low power density material is removed by vaporization, whereas for high power density bubble explosions play the dominant role and the material is removed in the form of clusters. Erosion and deposition. At the cathode, the cathode will be emitting electrons that will heat the surface causing it to be vaporized. Some of this material will fall back to the surface cool and solidify. At the same time, ions created by the emitting electrons crashing into neutral atoms and ionizing them will be attracted back to the cathode and deposited on the surface. Ions ejected from the anode or ionized near the anode will have felt a much greater acceleration before impacting on the cathode and therefore be entrenched much deeper and likely cause secondary emissions of local material leading to further electron emissions. At the anode, as the current density increases, material will be removed from the anode. Material which is vaporized and not ionized could fall back to the anode, or could end up being ejected outwards. Any ionized material will end up being attracted towards the cathode and away from the anode. The longer the discharge, the more material will be removed. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you are interested in more of this type of content. If you'd like to support this channel, you can via Patreon, Super Thanks on YouTube and PayPal. And if you are interested in merchandise, I will leave a link in the description below. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.